Oh, oh, fuck, is this recording? Indiana rapper Freddie Gibbs and human producer Mad... I don't know where he's from. They're back together again, fucking yippee, with Bandana, five years after they both managed to knock it out of the park with the unlikely gem that was 2014's collaborative project, Pinata, which I think has aged wonderfully for the half a decade it's been available to stream and is kind of universally considered one of the strongest collaborative rap albums to have been released over the course of this decade. Both of these guys have been involved with many different projects across the 2010s, but none of them have really managed to stick quite like Pinata did, fam. Too many times have I heard people respond to the question, yo, you went to Freddie Gibbs uh, with something along the lines of, eh, not really, only when he's on Mad Lib production. The two just fucking work. It's really hard to deny just how effectively they reinforce each other and Pinata is just it's just a great example of a project that in anyone else's hands would probably just be a pretty redundant idea of just ran into the dirt. But the meticulous songcraft that Madlib provides just kept it engaging and just gave Freddie Gibbs the perfect shoes to fill to make every bar he spits on that thing just feel vivid and purposeful. And fortunately that continues to be the case on their new record Bandana, which in my opinion actually shows Freddie rapping from a more mature and experienced perspective. On Pinata, it kind of felt like we were just getting a deep, detailed look into the dirty roots of all the nasty things Freddie Gibbs has lived through. And we do get more of that again here on tracks like Practice, where he goes into how the drug life has impacted his love life very negatively. But on Bandana, I think the difference is now it feels like Freddie has kind of risen above all of it. Like, do those soaring vocals that are sampled on Palm Olive and those celebratory horns looped all over the opening track freestyle shit not just feel akin to what would be the triumph of victory fan? fair of someone that's climbed beyond such a dark and hopeless life and moved on to something greater. To me, a lot of this album just kind of feels like it's coming from the perspective of some kingpin that's just looking over the chaos they've left behind, as depicted by the cover art of this album. I've got shooters, but I'm ducking shooters, and I know who did the murders, but that ain't none of your concern, are two of the many just simple but strong lyrical gems on this project that just really hit home this point so well for me. And it's Madlib's careful world building that manages to just tie it all together for me. Like, the beat on the song flat tummy tea. It feels like the soundtrack to what would transpire if you just like sprinted directly into some fucking mob boss's HQ and just shouted, it's the cops! <laughs> Madlib does a lovely job on this album just kind of setting the scene for Freddy to fill. Like the tracks Massage Seats and Half Made Half Cocaine both sound like they're being recorded in the midst of a fucking police getaway or some shit. And even the little skits that Madlib kind of peppers throughout the record have purpose to me as well, especially the one at the end of Palm which involves a comedian delivering a bit of dark humor involving this really morbid story about a man in prison for shooting dead someone that was sleeping with his wife. And in this story, the comedian tells the man is talking to someone he's in prison with, and the punchline is that the person he's talking to was also sleeping with his wife. But in this little skit, the laughter that comes after the joke is cut off, almost to suggest that it isn't actually really much of a laughing matter at all. Because that story, that joke he was telling, just goes to show that no one can be trusted in a life like this. You could get cheated on, you could end up being the cheater, you might die for doing so. And the story is realistic, and the way the track segues into the somber guitar plucks of the beat on the track Fake Names, it just kind of leaves you with that statement in your head, making it hit home even harder. The second half is lacking a bit though, in regards to memorable highlights, in my opinion, because the first half features quite a few more surprising production choices you wouldn't typically expect, whereas the second half kind of plays it a bit safer, giving you more of what Piñata was offering. And this is also the part of the record where hearing Freddy's kind of rugged, mumbly street voice just kind of starts to get a little bit tiring for me. But that is not to say Freddy is necessarily a crutch for this album. He actually does elevate the project quite a bit when he's not ignorantly promoting anti-vax. He actually really floored me at points here, especially on cuts like Situations, where he somehow managed to fucking seamlessly switch his flow up at least four million fucking times. I don't really think I've ever heard Freddy Gibbs sound more fluid and capable on a record, honestly, but there's never actually a song here where I feel like he's ever outshining Mad Lib, I guess. But that might be a good thing. I don't know. They work in harmony with one another. It's just quite a few cuts here don't really leave much of an impression and just kind of offer exactly what you would typically expect from this duo. Gat Dam and Soul Right are prime examples of this in my opinion. I'm feeling a 7 out of 10 on Bandana. I don't really feel disappointed at all, but I feel like they could have gone the extra mile a bit further on some of these cuts. But I have no doubt that they're going to pull through with another banger album when Montana eventually comes out, the, the final album in their little trilogy. Uh, but yeah, that's everything i got to say on Bandana. Thank you for watching my review. I hope you're having a lovely fucking day, bro. Bye!